I was worried how far my rock bottom was going to be. He struggled with eating to the point of making himself ill. I'm afraid Zane is not too advanced. I feel very good at all. One member in particular threw me up a wall. We got sick of each other. Zane, I hate to do this to you. I just only need you for a bridge. No tongues, you know. You've been asleep for 10 minutes. I'm sorry, dude. One Direction went through a lot together as a band. From the X Factor stage to the world stage, these boys had to follow extremely strict rules. They weren't ever able to do what they wanted. No dyeing their hair, no growing beards, no girlfriends, and certainly no friendships. This band was forced to follow the executive's rules, which ultimately led them into a downward spiral of depression and addiction. So let's get into it. Lately, I've been doing all of my shopping on Timu. They have everything you could think of, from affordable clothing to home decor. One of my latest favorites is this Skull LED lamp. I love having LED lights in my studio, and this product is perfect. There are so many options to choose from, and if you're on a budget, then Timu is the place for you. Right now, the Timu anniversary sales have really great deals. For example, there are thousands of awesome products you could buy for just $1 dollar during their anniversary sale month. So click my link in the description below to check that out. I'm also super excited about this new leash for my dog. I've been wanting one of those leashes I can wrap around my waist and walk my dog hands free and I was able to score this one for just $10 on Timu. This is the best website to go and stock up on. I'm always in need of a charging block and a charger. So I go to Timu because they have competitive prices and your dollar goes a long way. Now every room in my apartment has a charger. Check out Timu using my link in the description below and check out all the options they have available. Download the app and use code DKC5898 to receive a $100 coupon bundle for free. Thank you Timu for sponsoring this video and enjoy. Back in 2010, five guys got together and performed on a show called X Factor under the name One Direction. After their debut performance, their fame skyrocketed and they became one of the most popular music groups. And while I think we all know One Direction pretty well, a lot of people don't talk about the dark times and the shady things about this band. I think everyone knows that there was something wrong here because of how the band fell apart, but we don't really have the details. But in hindsight, if you look back on their interviews and some of their interactions, there were plenty of red flags and the signs were there. Let's start off by talking about their management because they started with a company called Modest Management. One of the reasons why a lot of One Direction fans do not like Modest Management is because One Direction was overworked by them and pushed way beyond their limits. Although no One Direction member has explicitly spoken out against modest management, a former member, Zane, later got candid in his memoir about the stress, anxiety, and eating disorder he dealt with while in the band. In addition, Liam Payne did an interview with This Morning in 2019 where he also discussed the environment, explaining how the band had two weeks to write albums on the road since management already sold tickets to their next tour. Needless to say, this put a ton of stress on these young guys. When we were in the band, it was kind of a case of we'd have two weeks to write the album and then they'd have already sold a tour, so we'd have to get the album done and then yeah. record it on the road. For you, when you got into the band, was it what you expected it to be? You have said that, that there were times when you just, I just have to get out. You know, everyone's kind of looking at this decades, and then my decade's literally been this, which has been the maddest turnaround of all. No, I, d I don't think any of us really expected to, it to happen in that, in that way, really. You know, we, we were just kids at the time that we made the band. Now let's talk a little bit about Modest Management and their reputation. Distractify, a news outlet, pointed out a few other instances in which some of the guys dropped public hints about the personal strain they endured while performing in One Direction. The only member who continued to work with Modest Management is Niall Horan, who actually has positively backed the management company and even launched his own golf management company under their umbrella. So of course, Niall is going to be cool with Modest Management because he's essentially a partner 
partner there. Actually, someone on Twitter asked him, why are you hanging out with modest management? Because they do not like modest management. And he replied on Twitter saying, because they're amazing. Why? So you can tell that he's really in cahoots with these people. As you guys heard, Liam Payne went through a lot while dealing with One Direction. Actually, Andy Cohen one time asked him if he had ever gotten into a fight with his manager, and he decided to drink instead of answering the question. And as we all know, Zayn really struggled during his time at One Direction with his mental health, and there's times during their performances where they had to provide excuses why Zayn wasn't present. I'm afraid Zayn is not too well advised. He's not feeling very good at all. That's the fact that he just ran. Sorry. I am going to need your help sick of this one. I think one of the reasons why Zayn really struggled was that he never felt like he was able to express himself. He's actually written that he wasn't able to keep his beard, he wasn't allowed to dye his hair, and he wrote over 30 songs for the band and all of them were turned away because it didn't fit the vibe that they were trying to make these boys into. They were constantly touring and they weren't allowed to have proper breaks and only ate when they had time. This ultimately led to Zayn developing anime. Zane was quoted saying, I didn't feel like I had control over anything else in my life, but food was something I could control. So I did. I had lost so much weight, I had become ill. The workload and the pace of life on the road, put together with the pressures and strain of everything else going on within the band, had badly affected my eating habits. And out of all the guys, it does seem like Zane has been the most open with how touring was so hard on him. In his self titled book, Zane reveals quite a bit, including the fact that during during his One Direction days, he struggled with eating to the point of making himself ill because he felt it was the only thing he had control over. In an excerpt from the book, obtained by the Associated Press, Zane said, quote, I didn't feel like I had control over anything else in my life, but food was something I could control. So I did. I had lost so much weight, I had become ill. The workload and the pace of life on the road, put together with the pressures and strains of everything going on within the band, had badly affected my eating habits. It wasn't as though I had any concerns about my weight or anything like that. I just go for days, sometimes two or three days straight, without eating anything at all. It got quite serious, although at the time I didn't recognize it for what it was. You may also know that Zayn has suffered from anxiety in the past, but has revealed that today it has subsided and he feels great. That's really strong of Zayn being so open about his issues because a lot of people relate to that. And I totally get what he means by the control aspect because sometimes you feel like that's all you really do have control of. But there are also some feuds within the band. Like for example, Liam and Louie did not get along at first. And actually at some point, they almost got into a physical fight with each other. It turns out that Louie is the oldest of these guys and he felt entitled to being the leader of the band because he had been singing longer, he's the oldest, he wanted to be the face of One Direction, but nobody else agreed with that. Have any of the boys uh, in the group ever actually come to blows? It came very close at points. I think it was well known within the band that I don't like taking I made it very obvious, I'm not going to tell you how. There was one moment where there was an argument backstage and someone, one ma member in particular, threw me up a wall. So I said to him, if you don't remove those hands, there's a high likelihood you'll never use them again. That is such a British thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's just an awesome. He went from Liam Payne to Liam Neeson in, yeah! like, two, in like two seconds. Bye! So Liam and Louie had their feud and pretty much Zayn didn't want anything to do with anybody. Zayn was speaking to British Vogue after leaving the band. He was the first one to get out of there. And he said towards the end, their last few performances weren't even fun anymore. And, you know, being 17, 18 years old, it was difficult to see the bright side in everything. Yeah, I think I'd known for a minute. There was a lot of, look, I don't want to go into too much detail, but there was a lot of politics going on. Certain people were doing certain things, certain people didn't want to sign contracts. So I knew something was happening. So I just got ahead of the curve. If I'm being honest with you, I was like, I'm just gonna get out of here. I think this is done. And I just seen it. And I completely selfishly wanted to be the first person to go and make my own record. If I'm being completely honest with you, I was like, I'm gonna jump the gun here for the first time. I'm a passive dude, but when it comes to my music and, uh, and my business, I'm serious about it and I'm competitive. So I wanted to be the first to go and do my own thing. That was 
the reason and then there was obviously underlying issues like within our friendships too we'd been together every day for five years and we would got sick of each other if we're being completely honest so we were we were close you know we'd done crazy things with each other and that nobody else in the world will ever understand or have them experiences that we've shared with each other and and i look back on it now in a much fonder light than i would have you know as i just left there were great experiences i had great times with them but yeah we just run our car personally i've heard that harry styles was planning his solo career and leaving the boys behind so i'm sure zane caught wind of this and didn't want that to happen either way zane told billboard that his relationships with the boys weren't as strong as the world thought he also claims that his vision as an artist didn't align with the band so he just didn't feel like he was producing anything of value for him like for example he did not like performing the song what makes you beautiful or kiss you or one thing it's just songs that never really aligned with him as a person and this has led to him getting into twitter spats with his former bandmates and writing diss tracks but zane wasn't the only bandmate who didn't really believe in their music now horan was also not a big fan of their music and actually he didn't even know a lot of their lyrics which makes me wonder how he performed for so long i mean they must have had like a projector in the back with the lyrics going up on the screen so they could follow them because he was recently challenged to finish some of the lyrics in this first album by One Direction, and he had no idea what they were writing or singing about. Well, I will test you. Okay. Complete the lyrics to this, please, Niall. It's like I'm finally <laughs> away. Who do you think I am? And now that you finally moved on. No. No. I don't know. Never heard that in my life. Uh, I could be, there's different ch ch choruses in that one. Uh, oh, don't make excuses. I, yeah, I've done, I don't know. No idea. <laughs> That wasn't the first or the last time that Niall has openly shaded One Direction's music. Speaking with official charts in 2020, the singer revealed that he thought Na 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 from the group's first album was the band's worst song. He said there are a few from that first album that are howlers. It still got to number one though. And they probably look at this music in that way because they were young. I mean, do you look back on like high school, the outfits you used to wear and you're like, oh God, like how did I do that? It's probably the same for them. I mean, they're like 17 years old writing this music singing this music and it's probably cringe once you grow up and i also think back to their young age because i mean being a teenage boy they're just figuring out who they are as a man and their identity yet they are under so much control with this band that they can't really develop any sense of personality actually liam payne claimed that he was pissed a lot of the times because you were performing every single day the same 22 songs and it was exhausting and boring he also revealed there were certain parts of it where it just got a little bit toxic. While there are definitely good and bad sides of being in this highly controlled arena performing music, Liam also told the press that being in this environment for so many years nearly killed him. Liam Payne just collectively broke the hearts of directioners all over again. During his most recent interview with Men's Health magazine, Liam got real vulnerable about life post 1D, revealing that it hasn't exactly been an easy transition attempting to gain back his own identity. He said, quote, when you're doing hundreds and hundreds of concerts and it's the same 22 songs at the same time every single day, even if you're not happy, you've got to go out there. He went on to further clarify his remarks with the example, it's almost like putting the Disney costume on before you step up on stage and underneath the Disney costume, I was pissed quite a lot of the time because there was no other way to get your head around what was going on. I mean, it was fun. We had an absolute blast, but there were certain parts of it where it just got a little bit toxic. But this revelation comes just days after Liam openly revealed he suffers from agoraphobia, an anxiety disorder in which you fear being in a place that makes you feel trapped, helpless or embarrassed. Because these boys were so famous, they were on the road, their parents weren't really around, they had to find ways to cope with this lifestyle. Liam said that the management used to lock them up in hotel rooms because there was nothing else in the rooms except for a mini bar. And at that point, he started to struggle with alcohol abuse. One headline reads, Liam Payne just said that One Direction fame was toxic and drove him to drink. And he claims that alcohol was a big problem for him. Quote, I still struggle with it now. I really struggle to say no to people because I don't like to let people down. It's in my nature. And it seems like Liam and the rest of the boys felt very out of control in this situation. And he hopes that no other artist really have to go through this because he was so young and really just reverted to bad coping mechanisms to handle all of this 
stress he was under. Quote, it's difficult when you have the level of fame that we had in the band. There have been a lot of people in trouble with mental health that aren't really getting the help they need. And I think that's a bit of the problem in our industry. It's the same stuff that happens to everyone that's been happening since the 70s. You know what the traps are. And if you're lucky enough, like me, you can get out of that scenario. I was worried how far my rock button was going to be. Where's rock button for me? And you would never have seen it. I'm very good at hiding it. No one would have ever have seen it. But rock button, it, I, I, I mean, I don't even know if I hit it yet. You were having moments of style ideation. And yeah, I mean, there's, there's some stuff that I've definitely like never, never spoken about to do with it. It was really, really, really severe. And it was a problem. And, and, and it was only until I saw myself after that I was like, right, I need to fix myself. Mm. There was like a few pictures of me on a boat and I'm all like bloated out and I call it pills and booze face. And I was like this, like my face was just like 10 times more than it is now. And uh, I just didn't like myself very much. And then I made a change. The problem we had in the band, and I don't blame anybody for this. I don't want to seem like I'm whining or moaning. Yeah. Oh my God, look at my life, whatever. But it feels to me like when we were in the band, the best way to secure us because of how big it got was just lock us in our rooms. And of course, what's in the room? Mini bar. Mm -hmm. So at a certain point, I thought, well, I'm going to have a party for one. And that just seemed to carry on throughout many years of my life. And then you look back how long you've been drinking and stuff, and you're like, Jesus Christ, that's a long time, even for someone who's, you know, as young as I was. I think this year's forced something out of all of us. And mm -hmm. for me, it forced me to really look at my life and go, what the F are you doing? Like, grow up. And that was the point. And you I'm still trying to work on that. I think another layer to this situation is that these boys were idolized. So many girls wanted to be with them and they were exposed to inappropriate situations early on. This staff member, Lou Teasdale, is actually the band's former stylist. And a lot of fans do not like her because she has spoken about how the band would sleep around with employees. And it, it was a weird comment because these are young kids and to think that they are sleeping with staff members, I mean, clearly it should be against the rules, but at the same time, Time, who's really doing this? Why are these adults trying to sleep in the same bed with 17 year old boy band members? And they claim that the employees were aware that they cannot sleep with the boys, yet a lot of these assistants and other employees would end up like, you know, on the couch with them or in their bed because they were all together all the time. This is part 17 of one of these stories you might not know about. And today I'm going to be talking about Lou Teasdale, who she is and why a lot of our fandom doesn't like her anymore. Lou Teasdale was One Direction stylist all the way from 2010 to the very end of their careers in 2015-2016. She was really close to all the guys and her daughter Lux grew up around them and they all sort of like hung around her forever. December of 2020, she appeared on the podcast Slides and DM Slides, which is a Spotify podcast. And she said some interesting things about her time in One Direction. Like, I didn't party too much with them and got involved in too much of that side of it. You know, some of the women did and would end up, you know. Me, I was with them right at the beginning and right into the end, so you, like, kind of can't sleep with them. It's quite important to keep your job. Lou revealed some newcomers would die for the job and fall in love with the boys. This might not seem so bad, but she went on to make it sound like if the girls would sleep with the guys, they would then get fired from their jobs. And that the guys were, like, having sex with all these people on their staff. So if people don't like hearing my feeling ideas, answer my Q&A. As we know, the band started off pretty young, but then they grew into men. And of course, they wanted to have some of this female attention, but it just seems like a weird like power dynamic when the employees and this terrible management are providing the, the women that they would hook up with. It definitely sounds like a toxic environment, especially when Liam is sharing that they would be locked into these rooms and they weren't able to leave. And I have a feeling that these boys felt like they were show ponies because they were expected to go and perform and then meet with fans, which is something that they weren't big fans of. Even though they were traveling the world to some of the most amazing places, they felt like they were trapped in a prison. Niall explained that he struggled with the idea of, why won't you just let us out? We want to go for a walk, you know? You're our age, just let us out. We just want to walk down the street and see the world. Was it mania from the start or did it take a while for it to... It took, it took a, like, in the UK it was nuts. You know, we'd go and do like signings here and there and... Bits and pieces like that it was crazy. That was the first kind of side of it, you know, banging on car windows and yeah, kind of around the release of What Makes You Beautiful was like when it really kicked off. We did like a HMV run around the country, Glasgow, Birmingham, Manchester, you know, like do the do the signings. And that was the first time I seen the madness. And then we went to like a like this is one of the maddest promo trips. We did like Italy, Italy, Germany, France, and God Holland in like. Four, four days like we're a different country every day doing lengths of promo and Ben came on that trip I remember getting to Milan on the first day and just being like this is different level now the, Italian, the were, amount of people that were there yeah it was like we were on Duomo in the middle of Milan, Milan city centre and outside the cathedral and it was just thousands they're banging on the car windows the first time I had seen proper hysteria 
And it seems like other band members like Liam Payne felt the same way. He tweeted in 2015, one time I'd like to be able to see New York without being followed and chased and cornered like an animal until other people get what they want. And actually a lot of people on Twitter were really upset that he felt this way and were apologetic. But if he were to go out in New York, I mean, the same thing is gonna happen. Actually in 2012, Niall Horan was caught shouting, Quote, remember the last time I walked down here, you shower of C words at a group of fans who were getting close to him? Wow. Fans were getting closer to him and filming him. They looked unbothered, even though he was clearly upset. He actually had to end up apologizing for calling his fans those names, but you could tell that he was really battling with this idea that they don't have freedom. Remember the last time I walked out here, did you? Remember the last time I walked out here? Will you say happy birthday? Niall, will you say happy birthday? Happy birthday, Chelsea. Chelsea Football Club. Established 1856. She's saying that at Chelsea. Niall, me never got a picture. Love you, Niall. Here, say hello. Niall. Read the name for the hat. It must have been difficult for these guys to continue living in fear by being trampled by their own fans. I mean, that sounds scary. And actually, at one point, Niall and the band had a little riff with Donald Trump, the former president, because he would not allow them to use, I guess, a garage to avoid the fans. And it really caused problems and put them in a dangerous situation. You have some history with Trump. Didn't Trump yeah. once, is this true, didn't he once kick One Direction out of a hotel in New York, is that true? Oh yeah, uh, he's not the first hotelier to kick us out, but um... <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah, we basically we were, playing we were playing Madison Square Garden. Yeah, he basically said, we basically said we were doing no meet and greets and stuff because it was such a big show, it was the biggest show of our career. Yeah. So he said, uh, could you take a photo with, um, with my lawyer's daughter? And right. we were like, she's gonna come down and make a big hullabaloo. And we were like, no, no, we're just, it's on lockdown, the show, blah, 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 blah. So he said, you're not allowed to use the garage door anymore, you're gonna to have to stand on the front steps and take photos and like basically promote the hotel, so we just left. Now let's switch gears and talk a little bit about Louis because I came across a story that really shocked me. Even though Louis was the oldest, he definitely went through it along with the rest of the guys. Louis claims that they were in Australia and a local news station had gotten a helicopter and a photographer trying to get pictures of Louis in his top floor hotel room. He actually claims that he was naked or just in his boxers and he felt like he could not escape the hotel room. Then he saw that there was this helicopter going around trying to get pictures of him while he's in his private space. What is one thing that you want the people to know? General, about the record. Could be about you, could be about, you know, anything. Just one thing. Well, the thing is, we're coming up through a reality show and then in a band like the size of One Direction. I don't think there's a lot left about me that people don't know, to be fair. That is sick to imagine a helicopter would be hired to go and do such a thing. I mean, imagine if it was a female celebrity. I feel like that would change things. People wouldn't try to be as aggressive, but maybe they would be. Either way, Louis feels like he is just the most forgettable member of One Direction. Actually, he said a few different sad things about the band because it does seem like, in you know, hindsight, maybe he was the least adored upon out of all of them. He claims that he was the least confident and he just didn't have the same, like, stage presence as Harry Styles or the others. Any Directioner can agree that every single member of One Direction has a certain je ne sais quoi or something that makes them unique and super lovable. However, in an interview with The Guardian, Louis didn't necessarily think he was special at all. In fact, the Just Hold On singer revealed that he felt he was, quote, forgettable to a certain degree. Louis went on to explain the qualities that made each member of the group stand out. He said, quote, the others have always been like Niall, for example. He's the most lovely guy in the world, happy-go-lucky Irish, no sense of arrogance, and he's fearless. There are times I've thought, I'd have a bit of that. Zane, back in the day, he could relate to me on a nerves level. In the first year, we were both the least confident, but Zane has a fantastic voice, and for him, it was always about owning that. Liam always had a good stage presence, same as Harry. They've both got that ownership. Harry comes across very cool. Liam's all about getting the crowd going, doing a bit of dancing, and then there's me. But over time, the notion of being forgettable changed for the singer, and he revealed, quote, in the last year of One Direction, I was probably the most confident I ever was. So Louis did feel better about his place in One Direction towards the end, which is unfortunate, but it sounds like he felt 
unnerved about the entire situation from the beginning. For example, he claims that the X Factor days really messed with his confidence. Quote, you know I didn't sing a single solo on X Factor. A lot of people can take the piss out of that. But when you actually think about how that feels standing on the stage every single week thinking, what have I really done to contribute here? Sing a lower harmony that you can't really hear in the mix? It actually does seem like he had some issues with Simon Cowell, which if you guys want a video about Simon Cowell, comment below. But it seems like Simon kind of saw him as the throwaway character of the group. So these boys were under a ton of pressure and a lot of them had to look a certain way. Like I've mentioned, they weren't able to grow beards or dye their hair. And when Harry Styles wanted to cut his hair, it was a pretty big deal. And I'm sure he had to get all of the approvals. I was like the one with the long hair. I'd had it for like so much of One Direction. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Cutting it off just felt very much like starting afresh. Yay. <laughs> I was about to personify my hair and I decided not to. So not only did these boys have pressure to look a certain way, they also had to speak a certain way. And there are so many times where they had to apologize to fans who were incredibly entitled or apologize for simple things they had said. They claimed that they weren't allowed to experiment creatively in the band because they were being censored, which if you think about some of the best bands of all time, they had a lot of creative freedom. So One Direction was truly manufactured. Quote, we weren't allowed to say certain things or word lyrics the way we wanted to. I would sit and wonder, I wonder if the fans knew how it worked, what they would think. People are more intelligent than that. They want to hear what's real. So why don't we write some stuff that we're actually going through? And that's what Zayn explained as, you know, a struggle he went through while in One Direction. It is not directed at all. Yeah, it's really yeah. natural. Um, tell me about Little Things. things. Go. Um, little Things is the second track. Thank you, Morris. It's one of our favorite songs on the album. Um, it's a little bit different. We've never really it done. is. I like. I like that though. Um, yeah. Thank you. So not only were they able to express themselves physically or through their music, but they also weren't allowed to date. Record label executives had ordered the boys to refrain from having girlfriends or hooking up with anyone because they wanted to protect the boys' clean-cut image as they were rising in the charts. They set strict rules to ensure that they would appeal to the teen market. This report claims that Harry wasn't allowed to love who he wanted. They hid his sexuality and told him what to wear. In the song Take Me Home, his voice was edited to be made more hoarse by the producers. He wasn't allowed to paint his nails and was forced to do PR stunts. Ultimately, they wanted to label him as the womanizer of the group at age 16. Why don't we see that part of your life? Yeah, we've never we've never been a band that has like lied about having girlfriends. We've always said that we have, so just that wasn't always the best footage, didn't always include. It's bad for business. Oh, no, no. Lying's bad for business. It's just like worse. Well, it seems like Harry has had the best deal out of all the guys because he's the most popular now. It does seem like he had a lot of pressure on himself because they really were propping him up as the main character and the womanizer and the, the person all the guys want to be, the, you know, the guy that all the girls wanted to date. So he had a lot of pressure to build this persona and to keep it alive. The first clip is from 1D Day and it's a Harry working out, but he describes their schedule and he shows how overworked they were. Now this next rule makes sense to me, but I also understand its impact. So the boys weren't allowed to do drugs, which is probably for the best, but Harry Styles claims that they weren't able to experiment with anything until the band had broken up, which kind of creates like a, a rebel type of like, complex because these guys want to go and experiment like you know young people do but they can't so then when they get the chance to or the you know the opportunity to drink a little bit then they overdo it as we know liam really struggled with alcohol and it seems like as soon as he got a chance to go and grab a drink he just wouldn't be able to stop which developed his addiction he used to get off the stage and then you'd be that high off all the endorphins whatever get horrendously drunk get up at like five o'clock in the afternoon and then do it all again but we used to come off the stage because because at the time, towards the end of it, when we were that busy, it was like, you would. We'd write the album in two weeks. 
Because guys, if people don't know this already, five albums in five years is way too much. Five albums in five years is a lot of work. Most artists cannot do that. And I think it put a lot of strain, not only on the boys, but their relationships, because it doesn't seem like any of these guys are best friends nowadays. And it kind of makes sense. They were put in such a toxic environment that they all kind of turned on each other. All of them left the band really messed up with broken relationships and difficulties building normal relationships. They went from these contestants on a reality show to some of the biggest celebrities out there and it's not like they were child stars and had like a slow progression of becoming more and more famous they were just thrown directly at the top and I, I really genuinely do think that we needed the break that we had um because it was just getting so hectic like we would literally be at award shows and never we'd win the most awards on the night and then never see the after party we'd already be on a plane going somewhere else to do the next show to go somewhere else and, and it, just by the end of it it's like you know we were kids man so it was, it was yeah. then I hate to do this, dude. I just only need you for a bridge. What time is it now? You've been asleep for 10 minutes. I'm sorry, dude. No, I'll get it. All right. I appreciate it. Recording this third album has been extremely hard. You know, we've been waking up in the morning and going straight to the studio, then going to the arena doing a show, and then going straight back to the studio after a show. So it's been really tough for us. So when these guys were supposed to be living the rock star life and, you know, having the best time ever, they really weren't because other executives were exploiting them, overworking them and pushing them past their limits, which is sad. But I'm so glad that they were able to get out of this. And it's interesting to see all the directions that each of these guys have gone. But I want to hear what you guys think of One Direction and this terrible story about their journey, because when I was younger, I thought they were living the best life ever. And I think that's a problem, like a consistent problem in society when we look at celebrities or people in a privileged position. I mean, obviously there's privilege here, but there's also the dark side to these things. And I hope now you guys look at One Direction and you think a little bit differently of them because what they went through was not okay. But until next time, I'll see you in a new video soon. Bye guys.